Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. What is the ultimate science can offer? Truth. One of these truths is this. Hidden within each of us is not only the capacity to love and hate, but to take that final step to be not only a creator, but a destroyer, a mad, unreasoning killer. That final breakdown of our manners, mores, customs, that take us away from the millions of years leading to civilization, back to the animalistic, the monster that lies within each of us. And now, as is my custom, I come to that final prognostication Dr. Basso predicts. of the atavistic and extrasensory perception. I call on Dorina for a prediction. This very night, in our very time, and on the shores of this lake, the prognostication is murder. To. Really? I seem to prefer this one. Are you enjoying your weekend with the Otterwood? Frankly, it's pretty heady stuff for a psychologist. Some of those tycoons in there, and your father included, scare the heck out of me. <laughs> you want to get away from them for a while? Oh, now there's a brilliant idea. See what happens when you hang around me? I do. Let's go. Back 
So that grabby little man finally let you go. That grabby little man happens to represent an investment portfolio of a million bucks. <laughs> Where's Lynn and Ted? They went for a walk down by the lake. I wish they hadn't. Oh? Why? You heard what Dr. Basso said. Something terrible is going to happen along the beach tonight. <laughs> Big deal, big deal. After that demonstration, how can you be so skeptical? Demonstration? It wasn't a demonstration. That was an act, purely for the entertainment of our members, nothing more. He takes a girl and, and puts her in a hypnotic trance and takes her back to a former life. And you're not impressed. <laughs> Money impresses me, baby. Money, not goo-goo eyes. <laughs> oh, except yours, of course. Do you know where Dr. Basso is? Nope. Not unless he uh, disappeared in a puff of smoke. just crazy about that Dr. Basso. Basso? John Basso? Do you know him? I know of him. Well, he really put on a wild show tonight. A show? He took a girl back to her former life. I wish you had been there to see it. Well, so do I. It's possible. Really? Really. <laughs> Stay here. Ted. Who lives here? This is the honeymoon cottage. You go back to the lodge. Call the police. Go on. Go on. I'll wait for you here.
never seen anything like it. Neck broken in two, like a pile driver hit him. Same for her over there. $120 in here. That lets robbery out. <laughs> Seaweed. All the way to the door. <sighs> Carpet's wet here. See if you can find me some powder. Before we do any damage, we better call the lab boys. What do you think would make a print like that? I don't know, a clever man could have forged it. Do you think a man did that? <laughs> you got any better ideas? No. Call the lab boys and wait for them here. I want pictures, lots of them. It uh, may come back. <laughs> what might come back? Come on. Here, have the boys rope off this entire area right down to the water. Come on. Beasley's been here. They've only just arrived. Seem like nice kids. Officer. Yes, Mrs. Crane. Officer, I don't know if this is important, but Dr. Basso predicted something terrible would happen along the beach. Dr. Basso? An entertainer, a hypnotist. We booked here for the week. He's a clairvoyant. There was a demonstration, and he said that some creature out of time was hovering over us more than a million years old. I think we'd better have a talk with this Dr. Basso. Where's he staying? He's in cabin 47. We appreciate your cooperation. Lieutenant Blake. Yes. Lieutenant, I'd like to point something out to you. Now, I saw those bodies, and whoever mutilated them has a very special problem. Yes, I realize that. Tell me something new, Captain. I am a psychologist. Well, then, as a psychologist, what is your opinion of this Dr. Basso and his monster theory? That anything is possible. As a scientist, I keep an open mind. Yes, Captain. Anything is possible. We'll see you in the morning. I want to talk to you. I understand you put on quite a performance for the guests tonight. A honeymoon couple was murdered. What has that to do with me? You predicted something would happen in the beach area. Yes, I had a message. A premonition, if you like. When did you get this message? Tonight, during my demonstration. Many times during states of heightened concentration, I receive sensory impulses. I see. Had you ever been to the couple's cottage or to that particular part of the beach area before tonight? No. Mr. Crane said you were talking about a, a monster. Yes. There was no doubt in my mind that she would come. She? She. A huge, indestructible creature that comes out of the beginning of time. She will strike again and again. Yes, yeah, sure. I feel her presence even now. 
that she calls to you? I seem to be the only one who can hear her. And all this hocus pocus is supposed to be scientific? The science of ultimate research into the hidden recesses of man's mind. Yeah, well, right now, Dr. Basso, I'd say you were as good a suspect as any. I don't happen to believe this scientific jazz of yours. Each man is entitled to his own beliefs, Lieutenant. Mine are on the record. So I've heard. You believe a, a monster lurks in each of us. Hmm. You've done your homework well, Lieutenant. I try, Dr. Basso. I try. I warn you, she will come ashore again. When? Alas, I do not know. That's a lot of help. is it? After midnight? How do you feel? You've had me in deep hypnosis and I asked you not to do that. You were tired. You needed rest. I need to get away from here and away from you. I feel like I've been dead and... You do that Again, and I'm going to leave you sitting here like a piece of clay. You will never leave me. You cannot. Someday I will. Dorina, you mustn't talk that way. You are not only necessary to my psychic researches, you are necessary to me as a man. We are one. We are inseparable. Soon we will be rich, famous, powerful. The hate you now feel will turn to love. Dorina, close your eyes. You will never leave me. As long as I live, I will possess you. Something beyond yourself makes you need me. Do you understand? I understand. I found you in the gutter. What were you before I found you, Dorina? Nothing. I gave you a new life. Soon a more magnificent life will be ours. Now listen closely. There was an accident tonight here at Tanglewood. Good morning, Ted. Good morning. You know, uh, Lieutenant Blake seems to be a nice guy. Efficient. Has anything turned up yet? Nope. Some folks think Basso had something to do with it. Do you? No, of course not. He lucked out with that prediction. I don't believe in that junk. Do you? Research has proven that some people have the ability to see into the future. Precognition, we call it. Oh. Well, then, maybe he's got it. Look at that front page. Mm. Ted, you're brilliant in your line. Uh, psychic research, whatever that is. <laughs> we merely try to explain the unexplainable. I'm a simple man. I know only one way to judge a man's brilliance, and that's by the size of his bank account. <laughs> In that case, I'd rank right along with the village idiot. Nothing to it, making money. All you've got to do is want it more than the next guy. Why, even in my retirement, I play a little game every day with a newspaper. I look the front page over very carefully, searching for an item that I think might make me some money. Does it work? Sometimes. There's a million dollar idea in this headline. Read the last paragraph. 
Beach couple found murdered. One baffling aspect of the case concerns Dr. John Passo, who is himself an investigative hypnotist. Last night at Tanglewood, a country club resort owned by the retired wealthy investor Sam Crane, Dr. Basso predicted that something horrible would happen on the beach area. He was questioned by police, but not held. You see a fortune in that? I smell money in it, and it's right up your alley. It's yours as a wedding present. <laughs> You're not serious. I couldn't be more serious. Why, we can take this two-bit sideshow man and make him into the greatest thing in the country. We'll put on a publicity campaign till everybody's talking about him. We'll manage him. We'll publish Basso books, syndicate columns, book him on the lecture tour, TV shows. Ted, there's money in this prediction. Big money. And between us, we can do it. And where do I fit in? Why, you give him the stamp of approval, Ted. Captain Theodore Dell, young psychologist says, Basso's experiment's amazing opens a whole new avenue into the understanding of the subconscious. Why, it's the kind of escape stuff the whole world's crying for. Look at my wife and her friends. Ted, it's a natural. Why, it'll be a lark for me and money for you. Sorry, Sam. I wouldn't touch that kind of money. Wait till it starts piling up. That'll take care of your scruples. I've been trained to fight this sort of thing, not make a living from it. You'll get the hang of it. Well, you count me out. Ted, my daughter's going to need money. I have no intentions of supporting her and her husband. Why don't you go look at the act tonight? When you see him in action, you might change your mind. You mean after what's happened, you're going to stage another one of the... Oh, sure. The show must go on. So think it over, Teddy boy. Think it over. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Morning, Lieutenant. Hi, Nick. Coroner's report? Yeah. Strangulation. Neck bones were mutilated to a pulp. Any idea of the weapon used? Well, it was like Good a... Good morning. Morning. Coffee? Yes, Mason, please. Well, it was like a steel hook, just tore him apart. Any special marks? Well, the imprint of a talon on the back of the necks. A talon? A talon, like, uh, like an eagle. Anything from the lab? No, not much. No prints. Just some salt water stains, some sand, some seaweed. Nothing of value missing. No evidence of anyone having been in the room. Well, do they have any idea what uh, caused the prints? Not a one. <laughs> this case gives me the, the creeps. I, I think we're up against a... Now, now, don't tell me. Let me guess. You think we're up against a, a monster. Ah, science fiction stuff. But very good business. How long have you been in this racket? Still a non-believer, huh? Oh, save that for the paying guests. I assure you, I have been in communication with your thoughts. Oh? Well then, uh, suppose you tell me why I came. You wish to discuss business with me? Hmm. Good guess. That was no guess, Mr. Crane. Fine, fine, but uh, let's not haggle. How would you like to be a rich man? I would like that very much. You've got something to sell. 
People pay for class. All this beats Coney Island, doesn't it? Television will pay top dollar for your act. I have no act. I have knowledge. That a boy. Keep a straight face. Hit them hard. Now our deal goes down the middle, 50-50. I'll back you until the thing gets rolling. Well, what do you say? I accept. Our deal begins as of now. We'll get the ball rolling tonight. I'm having some important people in. A newspaper man, a publisher, a psychologist, Dr. Dell. Captain Dell? The young Air Force psychologist? The same. He's a national hero. And if we can get his endorsement, we've got it made. Now play it big. Give them some more of that uh, out of the world stuff. And they love it. Give them uh, more predictions, big ones. Another murder. She will come out of the lake again. And she must kill. <laughs> that a boy. Make them shiver. They should. In my hands lies a power that has been given to no other man. <laughs> boy, you are a salesman. Nothing like self-confidence. Now, this is business. Big business. I'll have the papers drawn up right away. Your contract will be with my daughter. It's, uh... It's a sort of a surprise wedding present for her. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, how much time will you need to set up any gadgets? I use no gadgets, Mr. Crane. All right. I'll see you tonight. Make it big. I don't care what you do as long as we shake them. We shall pass through it together, and your loveliness will sweep a triumphant path before us. I will touch you, and you will awaken. Evidently, I've missed out. Who's that? His assistant. Her name is Dorina. She's beautiful. <laughs> Folks. Folks. <laughs> we have a very unusual act tonight. It's showtime, and may I present Dr. Basso. Ladies, gentlemen, it has been my very good fortune to find in this young lady the perfect hypnotic subject. Tonight, I will reveal the secret of life. and space. You will leave your present body and journey back. She's trying to resist him. What? And now for that phase of my work that has earned me such names as uh, fraud and charlatan. I am privileged tonight to have in my audience one of the country's most promising parapsychologists, Captain Theodore Dell, 
I'm sure many of you are familiar with his work in combat psychosis. Dr. Dell represents the School of Applied Psychology, my most outspoken critics. I invite him to join me tonight on the platform so that he may expose me as a fraud. Doctor? Well, thank you for a very nice introduction, but I think I'll sit this one out. The doctor refuses? Go on, Ted. Go on up. Now, you will find this most interesting. I will now prove that life is one unbroken chain, that it is endless, that we have been given continuous life, perpetual life. Tonight, I will take Dorina, an ordinary American girl, back through time and space to her former existence as Marion Rhodes. We will journey together back into history, 300 years. Would you care to question the subject? Dorina, you will hear this man's voice. I understand. You will answer any questions he asks you, fully and truthfully. I will. She's all yours, Captain. Where were you born? Chicago. Were your parents born in America? Yes. What national blood strains do you carry? Belgian, Dutch, and French. No English? No. Did your parents or your grandparents ever live in England? No. Have you ever been to England? No. Have you ever been especially interested in English literature or history? No. You are now traveling back through time, through space, farther and farther back into the past. Stop when you wish, when you see something familiar. Do you wish to stop now? Yes. Tell me where you are now. In my father's study. What is your father's name? Ronald Welford Rhodes. Where is your father's house located? Oxenham Road in London. What is your name? Marion Ann Rhodes. And the day and the year? Sunday, October 12, in the year of our Lord, 1618. You are smiling, Marion. Why? Captain Anthony Mead is due, and he's going to ask for my hand in marriage. You will hear another voice, Marion. You may answer that voice. The year is 1618. Who is your reigning monarch? James. Is he a beloved monarch? No. Hated. Beard. Who is Sir Edward Coke? He was Chief Justicular. Till James had him deposed. When was that? Last year, in November. Who is Frances Howard? Divorced wife of the Earl of Essex, now wife of the Lord Chamberlain, the Earl of Somerset. Upon what horse granted? It was said she was possessed by witches. Remarkable, impressive, but hardly convincing. I have shown you one phase of my work. Marion Rhodes has related names and events that can be validated. 
but there are still more frontiers to be explored. However, the demonstration is over for tonight. I am being informed that the creature that visited the beach house will return again tonight. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Dorina is very tired. She needs rest. So if you will please excuse us. What do you think of my experiment? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't know. So if you don't mind, I would like to borrow your assistant, Dorina, for my own examination. In the interest of science, I'm more than willing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get some air.
one of the boys got a glimpse of the whatever it is. Our artist did a work up there. Ever seen anything like that? No. Possibly fear of the unknown coupled with some strange sound made him think he saw that thing when all he really saw was a patch of fog. Possibly. You're not much help. Lieutenant, stop fighting the truth. It is just as possible the boy saw the soul of a living woman transmigrated to her first primitive body. I know, a million years old. Perhaps more. Simply because you've never seen such a thing, don't deny that it can exist. It exists only in your publicity-seeking imagination. Think what you will. But the boy saw it. Basso, you're just this far away from being booked. On what charge? Being in communication with the occult world? Ah, Lieutenant. Because of my publicity-seeking imagination, I find myself with an extremely heavy schedule. So if you don't mind, I will excuse you. to be out by yourself. Basso, please. Please let me go. You can get another assistant. There are lots of girls who... No, my dear. There are not lots of girls. There's only you. I'd go away quietly. I wouldn't tell anyone your secrets. You will do as I say. You will sleep and rest. Rest. You will understand and do as I say. Dr. Dell is going to come to talk to you. He will try to hypnotize you. You must resist this. You will resist. He is our enemy. He is trying to destroy us. Your beauty must not be destroyed. It is mine to do with as I will. You will love me as I love you. Now I must go. Do remember all I've said to you? Yes. Well, good afternoon. You uh, certainly picked a hot spot for our first session. You know, I'd hope to place you under hypnosis, but I hardly think this is the place. It wouldn't do you any good. You can't hypnotize me. You've been instructed to resist me. I see. Look, you must understand, I want to help you. Get you back to a real life. You've been living in a shadow. Just ask the questions, doctor. Books going to the printer. Closed a deal with Beale Syndicate this morning. And uh, next month, 350 newspapers serialized the Marion Road story. How do you like that for quick profit? I salute you. Not I. It's that sales ability of yours. Oh, it's, it's much more than just sales ability. Oh, sure, sure. Mr. Crane, I think it's time we split 60-40 in my favor. Oh, just a minute. I don't have a minute. It's 60-40 or nothing. Well, I guess we can arrange something satisfactorily. I'm sure we can. Oh, yes, it's not a good idea to allow your family to go to the beach. Doc, don't press your luck. And you better lay off that prediction stuff. One miss and our profits take a nosedive. I'm certain our good fortune will continue.
Say Nemo. I know it's Basso. If I said that, you'd say I wasn't taking the scientific approach. It's gotta be. Two young kids, wrong place at the wrong time. But I'll get him. I'll get him. Were you asleep when it happened? The last thing I remember was Dr. Basso saying good night. Had he put you into a deeper state of hypnosis? Yes, he said I needed the rest. Do you remember anything after he put you into that state? Nothing. It's like I've been dead. How do you feel now? Very tired. As if I'd been doing something very strenuous. Strange. I would think that, uh, well, you'd feel rested. I know I should. I never do. Ted? Well, go on. There's something wrong with me. I have the ability to kill. Most of us do. I don't mean that. There's something else. Can you tell me? No. You do know that you have to get away from him. You need to be weaned away from him. It'll take time. It's like getting rid of an infectious disease. Why are you wasting your time on me? Am I wasting my time? Yes. May I? I want to talk to you, Dorena. You heard about those two kids tonight? Yes. The whole town's in an uproar. I'm up against a stone wall, stymied. Five innocent people killed, not a sign of a human. Dorena, in my business, we have to be blunt. Somehow I know Basso's guilty. I just know it. That sounds like an accusation. You bet your life it is. Any evidence? No evidence, no proof, no nothing. Yet I know Basso hates the whole world and everybody in it, except himself. I believe he'd set a match to the whole thing if he could. Well, what do you think? About Basso? About Basso. I don't have any answers there either. Look, I want you to conduct a, a clinical examination of Basso. Use some of your own experts. Now that's impossible. Lieutenant, let me tell you something. Parapsychology is in its infancy. We don't prove, we don't disprove. We merely investigate. Now, this sort of thing could bloom into a full-grown carnival, and that's right up Basso's alley. But D.A. wants it. Well, what you need is a few more policemen with some magnifying glasses. Look, I can subpoena you if necessary. Check with my CO. Already have. Will you talk to Basso? I've done that, too. He'd be delighted. He would? Uh-huh. The rest is up to you. That business last night, I didn't like it. It was terrible. It uh, was coincidence, wasn't it? You want it to be coincidence? Of course. You will never believe. You brought the new contract? Yes, it's 
appears to be much more satisfactory. Well, it don't depend on any more changes. There's going to be an investigation this afternoon, a bunch of head shrinkers. An investigation? I'll try to stall it off. Why? This is what I want. Official recognition. Listen, these are not hysterical women. These are real doctors. I am a real doctor. Oh, come off it. Don't give me that stare. I can look right back at you. And you know what I see? I see a cheap fortune teller with delusions of grandeur. You shouldn't have said that. But you're a stupid man. Well, maybe I am. Anyway, business is business, and I'm sorry I blew up. It makes no difference. I've got some television people in tonight for the demonstration. I'll try to line up a network spot for you. You have relived part of your life as Marion Rhodes. Part of your life. Now you may rest. You will go into a deep sleep. The details which you have heard have proven to be accurate. After the last demonstration, I sent a cable to England. There is a grave with the headstone reading, Marion Ann Rhodes, 1600 to 1651. Could have been planted. Yes, she could be rehearsed. Perhaps you have created only a vaudeville act. That's very flattering. Could anyone have rehearsed the intimate details of her life in 17th century England? Her speech, her mannerisms. Every statement this girl has made has been proven, consequent to its having been made. She may have read extensively. Not so. She is no scholar. She never finished school. Her life is a matter of record. Is that not so, Lieutenant Blake? Yes. Do you think this is a hoax, Ted? My mind is open. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it is quite simple. As men of science, you must know that anything that will shatter a long-held concept is usually rejected. I have taken this girl back to a life she led 300 years ago. I can take her even farther back, say, to the moment of her soul's creation. Can you materialize her into a maniac that goes around the beach killing? Was that supposed to be a joke? Did it sound like a joke? I want some answers, Basso. Well, we all do. But this is a somewhat scientific examination, not a courtroom. I do not see how we can accomplish anything further. You cannot see because you do not want to see. I thought I wanted recognition from you. But now that I realize the truth, it means nothing to me. This has been impressive, but meaningless. Thank you, Doctor, for a very interesting afternoon. Yes. Doctor? Thank you, Doctor. And what I said about Basso still goes. But it's still just an opinion, Ted. I know, I know, but it's still one of the best opinions around. What is it you want me to do? Get rid of him. Good evening, stranger. Lynn, Ted thinks that we should dissolve our business with Basil. It'll make a million. It's a nice nest egg for you two. Thanks for the offer. I'm sure I'll never have another like it. What's gotten into that boy? Here now. Everything's going to be all right.
It doesn't matter. We'll be leaving the country tomorrow. I'm not going. You will be going. I'm staying with Ted. You will do as I say. Oh, no. I found the strength to resist you. Ted's given it to me. If I were not confident of our love, I wouldn't allow Dr. Dell to see you. You are mine. No one will ever take you away from me. You are mine, and I am yours. You do understand that, and believe it. Doctor! Shh. Mr. Crane. How are you? Everybody's here. I have some very important people I want you to meet. They're interested. Wait here. I'm aware that right now you're in his power. Dorina, if you can hear me, let me know. You must realize that even now you have the power within you to resist him. I'll help you. Together we'll fight him. Dorina, if you can resist him publicly, he'll have to let you go. Dorina, Listen very carefully to me. It is Ted. It's Ted. I want you to be free. You must fight against Basso. I can help you. As he speaks to you, my own thoughts will join with yours. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. If you will excuse us, it's time to begin. present Dr. Basil. Good evening. I trust that those of you who have witnessed my demonstrations realize that the purpose is education, not entertainment. Close your eyes in a deep, refreshing sleep. Your eyes are heavy. You are in a state of complete repose. I will count to four, and you will close your eyes in sleep. One. subject is not herself tonight. She is too tense. You are tense. Relax. Relax. I think we are ready to try again. sleep. You are very tired. You want a pleasant sleep. Your eyes are very heavy. You are falling, falling into a deep sleep. I'm talking to you, Dorina. Where were you born? Where were you born? Is everything all right? What's this all about, Crane? It's part of the act. Ladies and gentlemen, my subject is disturbed tonight. Her world is disturbed. 
I feel a menace to the people of this resort. I urge you all to leave Tanglewood and return to your homes. Give me your attention, please. I'm Lieutenant Blake, Police Department. I want everyone to do as Dr. Basso says, in an orderly manner. Now, go to your cars. When everyone is in a car, leave together. Stay together. I have men all along the road. Let's go. I have everyone here organized for convoy to town. Send a car for escort. I'll stay here. Hasn't this thing gone far enough? Have it your way. But you remember that I warned all of you. All right, now bring her out of it. Are you ordering me? Bring her out of it immediately. Suppose you get her out of it yourself. You pretend to be the expert.
There he is. Get him. together, at least in spirit. Your interference made her waver. You killed that spirit. What do you gain by killing me? The worst you can be charged with is accessory to murder. I gain the satisfaction that the one who shattered my world pays for the offense. let you leave me in this ugly world you were all that mattered to me soon soon we will be together in spirit again was some sort of physical link to her past. In destroying herself, the creature could not exist. She searched for freedom and found violence, terror, destruction, greed. But was Basil right? Is there a monster lurking within each of us? Waiting, waiting. 